Mike, looking ahead to November 8th, what are some early predictions that we can look forward to in terms of the local elections here in Santa Clarita? Well, what we're really going to get, which we haven't had for a long time, is a lot of these uh, legislative congressional races are going to be close, which they haven't been in a long time. Um, we haven't really had a, a genuine swing district in Santa Clarita um, as long as I can remember. So we have, uh, you know, hotly contested uh, races in the Assembly, in the State Senate um, for Congress, and we have a whole new way of electing uh, boards of trustees for COC, as well as the uh, City Council, which is in a November, even year election for the first time ever. So, And is the swing of new Democratic voters in the district is that going to cause as much of a change to this, or is it because of the circumstances surrounding these races that's really causing it? Well, you know, there's really, the three things are happening all at once. Slowly, these districts have becoming have been becoming more democratic over the decades. You know, this used to be a solidly conservative area, a uh, little less so, and it's still somewhat conservative, but not super duper much anymore. But uh, the really big difference here is when this election is being held, okay? The big disparity in elections traditionally in Santa Clarita has come down to turnout and the sort of person who shows up and votes all the time. Now, some of our smaller elections will have turnout that's actually in the single digits, if you can believe that, like 9% turnout and things like that. Um, you know, we'll probably see something like 80% turnout, which is, you know... Uh, unusually high. Un yeah, unusually high. You know, even if it's in line with what we saw in 2008, 2012, that's so much bigger than any other local election. So the composition of the electorate's really different. It's, it's younger. Um, it tends to be more democratic um, than usual, I guess. And so where that falls, what that all adds up to, it's kind of... That's a big question mark. And so with, with all these new voters coming in to vote for the presidential and with the potential for them to vote beyond that, will that upset potential polls that we have for these elections? Well, you know, we don't have too many polls. Um, in some sense, polling is easier because it's not so difficult to screen for likely voters, okay? So if you have a turnout of 10, 20%, you've got to call a lot of people to get enough people who are going to be voting, right? Well, now, if you're just calling registered voters, if eight out of 10 of them are going to be voting anyway, um, the polling's pretty easy. But we don't see the public polling. You know, the campaigns are polling, which usually they wouldn't even bother. That's happening. Um, now, we don't really have a lot to go on, on how that really plays out and how all these new voters, uh, the thing is, if they don't vote often, they're not paying close enough attention. Uh, a lot of these voters have never seen these candidates on a ballot they voted for before. So as those voters come in, we don't really know how they're going to react. Uh, you know, names that we would consider to be really well established in town, we don't know if that name ID really registers with the common voter who's probably driven more by the presidential election. And how does the spirit of the presidential election play into their choice? It's a good call. I mean, Donald Trump is a different sort of candidate. Does that, uh, you know, uh, are other Republican candidates immune to that or, you know, are they tied to him? So name recognition doesn't have as much weight this time around as with previous elections. Right, right. Because if, if you have a smaller group of people who are always voting all the time, they all get pretty familiar. Um, you know, if you take our city council election, for example, that usually has a pretty low turnout, okay? So you take established names like Bob Keller, uh, Tim Ben Boydson, both the incumbents, right? Neither of them have appeared on a ballot for, you know, some two thirds of the people who are gonna be voting this November. Right. Okay, so we don't really know what their familiarity is with them, where that's a really bankable thing in most elections. Right. It's kind of up in the air. So a lot of that has to do with how well they've campaigned. But then that becomes difficult because they've got to reach so many more people and they don't have the money to do that. So uh, it's going to be fun to see. This is going to be the basis. This election is going to be the basis by which a lot of, especially presidential year elections will be judged in Santa Clarita. This is really the template, the first election we've had uh, with genuine swing districts, uh, city council elections. And now because of state law, everything has to be on even years. So, you know, the Hart School District is now gonna be on even years. And uh, 
you know, the other school districts that are still on odd years, they all have to follow. So this is, this is the template for all the ones to come. We're breaking new ground. So really fast, uh, what is the races that you would say are the most interesting to watch coming this uh, election day? Oh, absolutely. I, I think the um, two most interesting are the uh, congressional race, uh, 25th congressional incumbent Steve Knight, two years in office versus Brian Caforio, a guy who kind of came out of nowhere um, with some significant backing and won a spot in the primary, beating a, a somewhat established Democratic uh, candidate in Lou Vince, and he's had a lot of money, a lot of outside support. Um, money has come into this election like we've never seen before. So if, you know, those people who are at home, uh, you know, they're getting the mail, it's hard to separate out the, the regular mail from the political mail. Um, parties are throwing a lot of money into this because, you know, they have the polling. We don't know what that polling is, but, you know, if they're going to spend a couple million dollars on a race, um, it's because they think they've got a shot and they can do something with it. And so you have, you know, these two campaigns that are really clashing. And it's interesting because, and we could go on forever about this, so we won't, <laughs> you know, two years ago, this was a Republican versus a Republican. A Democrat couldn't get through the primary. And now this is supposedly the, uh, you know, most vulnerable Republican in all, of, uh, in all of California and one of the most targeted and moneyed uh, elections, congressional elections in the whole country. So that's going to be an interesting one to watch, uh, big contrast in, in styles between those two candidates. Uh, the other one, I think, uh, 38th Assembly race, um, that one's wide open because of uh, our current 38th Assemblyman, Scott Wilk, is running for the 21st. First. First. 21st, 21st Senate, Senate. Or 21st, state 21st Senate. state Senate, uh, 27th uh, includes some of New Hall and Valencia, but 21st, most of the Santa Clarita Valley, um, Antelope Valley, Victor Valley. Scott Wilk is running for that, leaving his assembly seat open. Um, there's a bit of a scramble uh, in the primary. We have Democrat Chrissy Smith, Republican Dante Acosta, who uh, is also a councilman for uh, City of Santa Clarita, Chrissy Smith's on the Newhall School Board. Again, a really big contrast in styles between those two. And, um, you know, this is both of their first big November political campaigns. Um, both have a lot of money in, but Chrissy Smith's campaign has received lots and lots of money from the, uh, the state party. Um, so there's been lots of ads, uh, television ads, internet ads, uh, things in the mail. Um, all kinds of stuff, uh, paid, you know, people going around and knocking doors, kind of stuff we don't usually see. So that's going to be a really interesting one. Um, when it comes to party registration, like the congressional one is pretty much evenly matched. This one actually has a slight Republican advantage, though it's been declining uh, steadily over every kind of report of uh, voter registration. So probably close enough for a, you know, a Democratic campaign run really well versus a uh, you know Republican campaign that's less so, Democrat has a chance of winning. All right, sweet. Well, thank you very much for sitting down and talking with thank us. Thank you. Mike. Thank you very much.